In this training, we'll show you how you can use XPaths within the Mozenda Builder to make your agents more flexible and accurate across different situations. For training on composing an XPath, please see the Mozenda Help Center. To get a better idea about when to use XPaths, we'll use two different examples. First, I'll show you how to capture data that isn't visible on the page, in this case, a product's actual star rating text, when only the star images are available. Then, I'll show you how to use XPaths to repair actions within a list. Here, I've built an agent that captures each product name on a product list page, then clicks on each product to view its product page. On the product page, I want to capture the star rating. But, if I attempt to capture it the conventional way, no data appears in the Capture Text Preview window. As you can see, there is no text that displays the star rating, only the image. Fortunately, in this case, that information does exist in the HTML of this web page, and I'll show you how to capture it using XPath. If you watched part one of this training, you may notice the same two windows from that video. This is the DOM window, and it allows me to view the HTML for any desired object on the web page. This is how I'll find the star rating data. This window is the XPath editing window. Having created the star rating capture action, this is where I'll write an XPath that specifies the location of the star rating data within the HTML. The first step is to open these two windows. To do this, first go to File, then choose Advanced Features. Check the boxes next to XPaths, DOM, and Auto DOM Navigation. I'll explain these features as we go along. Remember, because an XPath describes the location of the object, the star rating, Within the HTML, we need to first find the object in the HTML before we can write the XPath. This is what the DOM window is for. Because I want to find the star rating, I'll hover my cursor directly over the stars associated with this product. As I do, the DOM automatically finds that object in the HTML. This is the Auto DOM navigation feature we activated when we opened these windows. Without this setting, I would need to manually scroll through the HTML in the DOM window to find this element. As indicated by the builder, here is the node that contains the star images. It's my experience that the star rating text data is available within one of the sibling nodes of the one that contains the star images, shown in blue. A sibling node is one of the neighboring child nodes of the same parent node. If I read the attributes associated with each of the neighboring child nodes, or sibling nodes, I'll find clues. I notice that this node has a class attribute with a value that includes rating decimal. If I open it, it shows me the actual star rating. I can now modify the XPath of the capture action star rating to collect this data. The XPath window shows me the XPath of the selected action. To see the XPath of any other action, just click on that action, and its XPath will appear in this window. First, I'll delete the old XPath. I want the XPath to find the star rating wherever it is in the document, rather than specifying the exact path. So I'll start with a double forward slash, rather than a single forward slash. I see that the node containing the star rating as text data is named div, so I'll type div. Because there are many nodes named div, I'll need to specify which div node within the HTML document the XPath should find. We found this div because it included the text rating decimal within its class attribute, so I'll use this information to identify the correct div node. Within a set of square brackets, I'll type contains parentheses at class comma rating decimal close parentheses. This means that the XPath will find whatever div node contains rating decimal within its class attribute. Let's look at that again. 
Rather than specifying how to get to the target node, my XPath describes what the node will look like and searches the whole document. Here, we specify the node name, div. Square brackets contain either that node's description or position, such as the first child node of its parent, or contain specific text. We're using a description called contains. Within the parentheses, we describe which element we're looking in, the node or its attribute, and the text to look for, separated by a comma. Notice that the Capture Text Preview now shows three stars, which is the text data within the node I've just captured. Now that we've got some experience, let's try repairing an item within a list. Back on the product list page, I'm capturing each product name, but I also want the price. When I capture the price, the agent returns an item not found error. If I scroll down, I can see that one of the prices, here, is not being captured correctly. Normally, I use the automated features to create an alternate location for this action. However, I don't know how many different locations there are, and testing through to find them all could be time-consuming. As you're about to see, XPath will be quicker and make this action more flexible and accurate. As before, I first need to learn about my target object, the price, within the HTML. If I hover my cursor over the price that wasn't captured, I notice that its node, span, contains a class attribute with a value of our price red. Normally, I would simply use this information to write a new XPath for this capture action. But this action is not just attempting to capture this price, but also every other price on the page because it's part of a list. So I need to write an XPath that would match this price and all the others on the page. Let's compare this price's HTML with the HTML of one of the other prices on the page. As I hover my cursor over one of the found prices, I can see that it also has a class attribute and a value of our price. But its node has a different name, in this case, font. Both the errored price and the found price I checked contained the text our price in the class attributes value. As I check the other prices, I see that they all contain the text our price in their class attributes, so I'll use this information to write my XPath. In this case, I don't actually need to delete the whole XPath. I just need to change the end. Because the prices are in nodes with different names, span and font, I'll replace the node name with a wildcard, the asterisk, so that either span or font could match. Then, I'll specify that this node needs to contain, within its class attribute, the text, our price. Notice that the item not found error is gone, and the target price is now highlighted in green on the page. Let's switch over to my Capture Text Preview to make sure my new XPath finds each price correctly. At the bottom of the builder, you'll see the Capture Text Preview tab. If I click on this, I'll see the Capture Text Preview window. If you don't see this tab, you can activate it by right-clicking on the title bar of any open window and selecting Capture Text Preview from the list. I see that every price is now captured correctly. Because of the new XPaths I've written for this agent, it will now capture price in whatever format it appears in this list. On the product page, my agent will now correctly capture the star rating text data in a format I can use. This concludes the introduction to XPath, where we learned why XPaths are important and how they help us overcome challenging websites. For training on XPath composition, see the Mozenda Help Center.